frequency separation. I know you guys have heard of it, and I know a lot of you are scared of it, but it's so easy to do. Today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how I start in Lightroom and finish my whole retouching process in Photoshop, ready to upload to Instagram. So let's go ahead, get started, but first we gotta roll that intro. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Just letting you guys know, heads up, I'm not using any fancy camera to record this. There's probably gonna be some audio lag in this video. I'm using my MacBook Pro um, webcam, but I just wanted to get this out there for you guys. So the first thing we're going to wanna do is edit our picture in Lightroom. I have my fully edited picture right here, and we wanna make a, we wanna create a virtual copy. So what you're going to do is go down here, click on the bar, Hit control if you're on a Mac, I believe it's right click on a PC like a mouse, and just go over to create virtual copy, boom. This way when we save our finalized version from Photoshop, our original Lightroom picture is not getting um, completely wiped out. So we'll have an original from Lightroom and then that will save from Photoshop. The next thing we wanna do is right click again on our copy or the original, it doesn't matter, they're both the same image at this point and go to edit in Photoshop. And if you have a portrait and you wanna follow along, pull that portrait up, pause this video, and we'll get this going. The first thing we wanna do is edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, yes, so we hit that, and now we're just gonna wait for Photoshop to boot up, and then I'm gonna show you guys some cool stuff. Photoshop for me was intimidating in the beginning, but don't worry, I got you guys. Just take your time with everything I'm gonna teach you today and you guys are gonna be pros in no time. So it's taking a couple seconds, boom, there we go. All right, so let's get this started. So first I like to do my spot healing and I'm gonna do that very fast real quick and um, then go over frequency separation. So the first step is to always duplicate your layers. So if you're on a Mac, put, hit Command J and right here you see we have a new layer. I like to zoom in. The short key for that is Command plus or minus to go in and out of your image. And next we're gonna set up our spot healing brush tool. Just so you guys know, I'm using a Wacom tablet and a stylus. It actually looks like this right here. It's really cheap and it's like 80 bucks, but it makes my workflow so much faster. I'll link the description below on Amazon which one I use if you want to consider picking one up. It just, you're gonna see me fly through this. So over here on the left side, we're gonna to go to the spot healing brush. And if you use the bracket key next to P, that's going to make it bigger and smaller. It's just faster than going over here and changing it. There's just some hotkeys I'm gonna teach you today too. Okay, so when you're using this brush, you wanna make sure your, your hardness is at 20%. If it's cranked up to 100, it's going to leave like almost perfectly circular artifacts on your image, you don't want that. Throw it on 20%, you'll thank me later. And now we're gonna start painting. So going over any spots that we don't want to show up on our image, we're just gonna color over. And the radius that you wanna use is close to the actual spot that you're removing. So by using the bracketing keys, I usually use my left hand on the bracketing keys, right hand on the pen, and we're just gonna start painting over any imperfections, any hairs, like this hair right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove, and so on. And it is a little bit of a time-consuming thing, but if you're doing like high-end portraits or headshots or just if you want to clean up any of your work, this takes a couple minutes and I'm just going to sit here and continuously paint over anything I see that I don't want. So just like right over here. And notice how with like this tablet, I'm just making fast, quick cleanup movements, nothing crazy. You could do this with a mouse, you could do this with a trackpad. I just prefer the, the stylus because it speeds up my workflow. And when you're editing a bunch of pictures for different clients, time is money, money is time. So you gotta get that. All right, so just going over here. 
You know what? Let me speed up this part so we can get into the frequency separation. So I'm going to fast forward this. Okay, so we're done with the spot healing tool and let's go over before and after. So here's our before and here's our after. It looks really good, right? Before, after. So we have the picture cleaned up right now and now we wanna start our frequency separation. Very easy, we're gonna create two duplicate layers. So hit Command J two times. The next step is we're going to rename the bottom one color and the top one detail. Because what are we doing? Frequency separation is pulling the color onto one layer, the detail on another, so we can work on the color layer, but not touch the detail layer. This way our skin doesn't look like a porcelain doll. I know so many Instagram photographers and there's beauty filters where the skin just looks completely smooth, there's no pores, there's no detail. I'm not about that, so I'm gonna teach you the right way. So let's go ahead turn off your detail layer we're going to set up the color layer first and what we want to do is go to filter and then blur and then gaussian blur now gaussian blur it could there's different radiuses that you could choose from my sweet spot is anywhere from 8 to 15. if you go a little bit too high you completely wipe out your your image and you wanna be able to see enough detail right before it starts to completely blur out. I'm using a Sony A7R Mark III, so there's a lot of detail, so I usually crank it up um, to around 11 or 12, so let's bump that up to 11, and then hit OK. Okay, so our first step is already done. Next, we're gonna turn on our detail layer. Make sure you select detail, and we're going to go to image, apply image and now we've got to make a couple adjustments here the first one we're going to go to is layer and then color because we're subtracting the color from the detail layer so we only have texture next make sure rgb is selected and for blending what do we want to do we want to subtract so we're going to hit on subtract there are a couple steps if your picture doesn't look like this it will in a second Make sure your scale is set to two and offset is set to 128. I'm not going to get into what these do. Just go ahead, set them up, make sure opacity is at 100% and neither of these are checked off. And now we're gonna hit okay. We have one more step. We're gonna go to our blending modes and just go down to linear light right there. And boom, now it's time to set up our brush so we could do our frequency separation. First, click on your color layer and then go over to the brush tool and we wanna use our mixer brush. Now, when you're on the mixer brush, there's a couple more settings we have to adjust and then we get to have some fun. So we want to turn off the white layer because that's gonna actually paint white and we want a transparent brush. So click on here and then you should have a checkerboard very simple. Now we want to adjust our wetness. The wetness is how much pull of blending we're doing and you want to keep it low because you don't want to pull a dark color all the way across your image and it's going to mess it up, trust me. So the sweet spot's anywhere from 1 to 5%. If you want a little bit more pull, you go a little bit higher. 3% works great for me and um, that's what we're going to use. Load 75 mix 90 now the flow is important and that's how much blending you're going to be doing as you paint with your mouse and i like to keep it very low this way if i have to go over an area numerous times i have the ability to but if i just want a little bit of blending i could just tag up that area very fast so we're going to set mine up to let's say about 13 percent 10 to 20 percent works best anything higher can do a lot of destruction to the image and we don't want that happening okay so now is time to paint and if you zoom in on skin you could see that the texture goes in multiple directions and that's that's going to be what the direction in which you're going to paint so everything looks cohesive and it looks good 
So we're gonna start with the forehead, and if you notice, side to side, the skin's going, and that's the way we're going to paint, and we're just painting. That's all we're doing is painting, and trust me, it doesn't look like we're doing much, but when I show you the before and after, your mind's going to be blown. So we're just painting right over here. We're gonna go down on the brow because that's the direction in which it's going in. And then we're gonna, notice how in this corner, right over here, it's, um, it's a little bit lighter and maybe desaturated for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna make my brush smaller and blend in that area. And as you can see, the more I blend in, the more color gets filled in over there and the smoother it winds up looking. So we're just gonna go on the side over here by the eyebrow. We're gonna do in the eye area for the blush. And rule of thumb is don't go over highlights and pull them into shadows and vice versa because you'll lose that contour and that's what you want. You want highlights, shadows. If you have over here, you know, the contour of the makeup and then the, the cheek, you don't wanna blend this area into the cheek because it defeats the purpose, you're flattening the skin and the whole point of frequency separation and dodging and burning and those techniques is having a dimensional look. So let's continue painting and I'm gonna go over here, go underneath the eye, right above the nose. Bring that highlight down over here and accentuate the cheek a little bit more and then come up over here. We'll blend this in a little bit, make it a little bit smoother. Now it doesn't look like I'm doing much. And like I said, in a couple seconds when I show you the after, it's gonna look such a difference, I promise you. Just hang in there. Hit up the highlights very quickly, but you wanna blend in the nose. Don't go over creases too much. Just go over them once or twice and we're just blending. And just smooth movements, smooth movements. That's all we're doing. To the upper lip right here, to the side, to the right cheek, well, her right cheek, my left. And we're just blending everything in and that's all we're doing. Go over the lip if you want. I like to go over the lips a little bit. Softens them up nice. Don't want to do too much. Go under here. Hit the shadow underneath the chin. Okay. And this is looking pretty good and you just got to take your time and practice. You'll definitely get the hang, but this is, to me, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so we're finished with our frequency separation. This was just quick. I, I would normally spend a little bit more time on it, and my, my overall editing process when it comes to touch-up is about a half hour to an hour, depending on how in-depth I go, whether it's uh, brightening eyes and removing more hairs and crazy hair and stuff like that, but that's for another day. So let's go ahead and go over the before and after of the three steps that we took. So here was the original, here's the spot healing, and then here's the frequency separation. So as you can notice, the cheeks look very smooth. Everything looks so much better blended in. And that's the final look that I go for. It looks clean, doesn't look overly done. That's, that's the number one, that's the emphasis that I have to put. It doesn't look too much. So if we wanna get this picture now into Lightroom, what I like to do is hold down shift, select all the layers and then control and then merge layers. Next, you're gonna go over to file and then hit save. And once you save it, it goes and saves it onto our duplicate layer that we had made. So this way in Lightroom, boom, we have the original and the before and after pretty much. So just toggling back and forth, you can see a difference. And that's that. Now you're ready to go ahead, 
throw this into Dropbox or AirDrop, however. So there we have it guys, the tutorial is over. I hope it wasn't as hard as you thought it was going to be and I hope you feel more confident and comfortable in your Photoshop skills now. I'm going to be dropping a bunch of new tutorials soon, so in the comments below, let me know what you guys wanna see. If you thought this was helpful, leave a thumbs up. And if you have any other recommendations or any ways that you like to edit skin, let me know in the comments below also. My name's Jason Anthony, I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.